Good afternoon, one and all, and welcome to our earnings update from Elsacorp PLC. Uh, this presentation will be looking into the first quarter financial year 22 earnings, as well as giving a forecast for an outlook for the company moving forward. So our main headlines is high spirits. So um, the beverage segment continues to be the cash cow for this company, despite a turbulent macro background. Uh, right. So in terms of the valuations, we uh, came up with a target price of 72.77. Uh, that is uh, mainly a blended valuation whereby we take both the PER and PBV of um, uh, peer, peer multiples for listed uh, conglomerates. Um, and furthermore, in, into this uh, valuation metric, we actually added Lion Brewery. And our main reasoning behind that is the fact that Melstar Corp's main uh, arm or segment is its beverage segment, which is uh, distilleries. Um, we uh, then applied our weighted averages for these multiples for our FY22E or forecasted profit and uh, net asset value per share figures. And we came to a target pr share price of 72.77, which actually gives us a 25.68% upside. Therefore, based off these uh, uh, numbers, we actually recommend a strong buy for Melster Corp with a medium to long-term investment horizon. Um, let us actually go through uh, some of the rationale for that forecast and what actually ha happened in the first quarter of FY22. We actually saw the beverage segment continue to be the main revenue driver for the group. Uh, the top line actually expanded by 44.7% on a year-on-year -year basis to 36 billion rupees, whilst the group actually posted profits of 305 uh, million uh, as opposed to a 2.1 billion loss in the corresponding quarter. Uh, despite And this actually comes on the back of uh, the fact that there were further lockdowns that occurred, uh, coupled with temporary ban, uh, bans on the sale of alcohol. Um, the quarter saw an uptick in demand as country, uh, the country begins to reemerge from the worst um, segment of the pandemic. So as, as it has been historically, the beverages uh, segment or component of uh, Melster Corp seems to be the uh, primary revenue driver. Uh, diversified actually accounts for 25.67%, but that is actually on the back of the fact that in 2019, Aitken Spence was recognized as part of Melster Corp's diversified segment. Um, in comparison to uh, these two segments, the others are somewhat minute and account for roughly around um, 8 to 9% of actual top line generation. Um, despite the beverages segment actually being a cash cow, for the company, we feel that moving forwards, it will take somewhat of a hit. Now, this is something that we've had uh, on the back of uh, dialogue with the management and also uh, our various research um, endeavors. What we've seen is now from the onset of the pandemic, one of the major highlights has been the fact that uh, disposable incomes have actually uh, begun to wane or decrease as more and more people seem to either be on a furlough scheme or be uh, or, or unemployed. Um, and one of the primary um, effects of the pandemic has been a lowering of the average disposable income levels for consumers. Uh, and we have seen this actually become, uh, or oh, sorry, take effect um, as uh, especially with the case of distilleries in terms of uh, the demand actually moving to more of the non-premium products. So for instance, their flagship product is the 750 milliliter spirits bottle, but more and more com uh, consumers seem to be switching to the 180 milliliter bottle as consumer spending or consumer purchase power has uh, waned uh, since the onset of the pandemic. However, moving forward, and this is where it becomes a projection, we've shown uh, this in this line graph. If we look at the historical revenue growth, now from 2020 to 2021, we see uh, revenue uh, or top line actually increased by 12.1%. That was coming off a relatively low base in 2020. Uh, for 2022 and 2023, which is our forecasted years, we actually still project uh, top line growth. However, it'll be at a much lower uh, level on the back of the fact that there is a shift to the non-premium segment, coupled with the fact that the consumers may even switch to the demerit market, such as illegal toddies. 
However, we still, the reason why we proje uh, project a, a positive revenue generation or a positive revenue growth for the future is based off this pie chart. Now, for instance, this is, this basically gives us a breakdown of the alcohol per capita consumption in Sri Lanka. And this is based off the WHO or World Health Organization, which shows that majority of the consumption of alcohol per capita in Sri Lanka amounts to spirits. So spirits accounts for uh, just over 85%. Beer comes in second at 13%, 13%, whilst, um, whilst uh, other segments account for 1.6%, and wine accounts for less than 1% of total uh, alcohol per capita consumption in Sri Lanka. So moving forward, yes, there may be a small impact on margins. However, given the fact that demand for spirits is somewhat price inelastic, we actually project there will be revenue growth. And with, that is one of the main rationales behind why we arrive at a value of 72.77 rupees per share uh, in our forecast or a target price. Uh, beg your pardon. Uh, so what we feel is that moving forward, again, sorry for that, uh, that the group's beverage segment will be the shining light. Uh, however, we do feel that the diversified segment will also be a key driver. Now, why do we say that? Now, in two, 2018, the diversified segment didn't really account for much. But as stated before, in 2019, Aitken Spence was brought under the diversified segment. Now, in 2021, we saw this actually weigh in a lot, and it was one of the worst hit segments given the onset of the pandemic and borders being closed and tourism earnings falling to a virtual, uh, coming to a virtual halt. Uh, what we expect is that with the vaccination drive that has, uh, well, successful vaccination drive that has been undertaken in Sri Lanka, and the fact that Sri Lanka is moving into the green list and borders, international borders are opening up, that the diversified segment will now start playing a much larger role in uh, top line generation. Therefore, we actually do see uh, future uh, earnings as well as top line growing on the back of not just their traditional revenue generator, which is the beverages segment, but also their diversified segment aided mainly by uh, Aitken Spence. Uh, furthermore, in 2021, the uh, company gave out a dividend payout ratio of 124%, uh, uh, which gave a dividend yield of 11.9. Uh, we believe that they will still maintain a high payout ratio uh, and given the fact that their forecasted earnings will grow, it would actually yield in a much higher payout moving forward. So uh, Melsta Corp actually also is an attractive proposition just purely because of their dividend policy um, that they have shown historically. Um, now, what we also have maintained in those forecasts is that there will be growth in its other key verticals. So plantations, telecommunications, financial services, and diversified. But rather than going through all of these segments one by one, I will focus on diversified. And as I have mentioned uh, in uh, prior to in this presentation, it is mainly driven by the fact that Aitken Spence and the tourism sector in particular will be coming online uh, in the following year, given that uh, the vaccination drive has been successful and the fact that borders are opening. We will see a higher influx of tourist arrivals. In fact, last month we saw the highest pickup or growth in a, on a month-to-month -month basis in tourism numbers. Um, and this will be one of the major driving forces as it will contribute a significant amount into top line when compared to the other segments. Um, now I will hand it over to Harin who will actually uh, go over some of the technicals pertaining to Melstercorp. Uh, he will uh, guide you all through the basics as well as what we um, uh, do predict for the uh, counter moving forwards. Over to you, Harin. Thank you, Noan. So this is basically the uh, chart, Melstercorp chart. So I have taken the weekly chart. Uh, I have not taken the monthly chart just that's because every candle represents uh, one month time period. So I have taken instead, I have taken the weekly chart to just give a clear idea where the market, where the stock is actually heading right now and uh, what are the key uh, supply and demand zones and uh, where and where we will be able to see a few of the retracements levels and uh, also uh, whether there's possibility 
uh, whether the next key resistance could be tested or whether the next uh, whether the price would actually get rejected from the next key area of resistance or support so basically uh, currently the rsi so the weekly rsi comes to a level of 56.74 770 so basically um, uh, rsi is actually a technical indicator which is actually used in the uh, used for analysis in the financial markets so uh, this actually gives us the uh, current and historical strength of uh, historical strength or weakness of a particular stock uh, based on the closing prices and the re recent trading pe uh, recent trading period so at the moment uh, what we can see is um, previously when we look at uh, when the prices was actually trading in a declining momentum we were able to see how the price was actually trading somewhat around in uh, 2017 uh, the price was actually trading somewhat around in 70 rupees region and then started to decline and uh, make certain lows and we were able to see again in somewhat around in 2020 May I, in mid of 2020, how the price was actually uh, getting rejected from the area of a support, heavy sub support level. And at that time, actually, the price was actually over a uh, bit of oversold, heavily oversold, where, which was at the, the weekly chart. We were able to see the price was actually trading below the area of, uh, in the RSI, below the area of 20, which is considered as actually an oversold key uh, area. So from that, that a key area we were able to see price moving up in a bullish momentum hold on uh, there's a small issue Let me try. yeah so uh so basically yes basically price was actually trading in a uh, bullish momentum thereafter and uh, then Price made a high of again in 2021 January. Price made a high of 78 rupees and then declined to a key area of weekly support 40, 42. And at that time, price was actually trading somewhat around in a uh, range, bit ranging and consolidating in between the area 40 and 50. Over a couple, this actually happened in bit uh, in start of 2021 and till uh, sub, somewhere around August, we were able to see the price was actually on consolidating and ranging and trying to break the key area of psychological area of 50 52 rupees uh, the previous resistance zone the resistance zone is the resistance is actually con considered as a supply zone so at that time if you all can see clearly uh, this weekly previous weekly resistance which is considered as a supply zone price was actually getting rejected over and over again uh, whenever the price comes to the level of 50 52 rupees in between because uh, 50 is considered as a heavy psychological area so then thereafter, we were able to see that key area of 50 was broken and uh, due to higher demand, uh, there was a higher and due to higher volumes, we were able to see the P area of 50, 52 rupees was broken. And then the 60, 62 rupees was actually tested. So currently uh, looking at it from the weekly chart, we can clearly see it's in an ascending formation. So it's basically making certain higher highs, higher lows, so certain higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, those in a uh, ascending bullish trend, we can clearly see that price makes only higher highs, higher lows. In a descending, we'll be able to see lower highs, lower lows. So uh, basically, at the moment, uh, RSI is in the mid range, the weekly chart. So there's nothing much to worry about the RSI at the moment. So uh, when I add uh, something like EM, some levels like EMA, uh, EMAs, which are known as exponential moving averages, moving averages uh, helps us to determine where, whether, where the price is actually whether there is a bullish trend in the market, where is a, where the price is actually in a bearish trend in the market. So when the moving when the price is trading about the moving averages, both the moving averages that I have taken 18 and 8 period. So when the price is actually trading about those moving averages, we can clearly see the price is inclining. Whenever the price starts to trade below the moving averages, the price seems to be a bit of declining. At this time of uh, 2021 to 2021, uh, from August to uh, so January to August, we were able to see a bit of uh, consolidating happening over and over again when the price seems to be trading above the moving averages and then coming below the moving averages. That's because mainly the price was actually ranging at that time. So now uh, what we can clearly see is the price is actually trading above the moving averages. The, the current closing price is uh, 56.5. So uh, now the price seems the price is trading about the uh, moving averages. There's nothing much to worry about. There could be certain high lows 
uh, in the coming weeks or even weeks after there could be certain lows uh, just this weekly resistance of 60 62 is a strong uh, resistance because uh, even in somewhat around this uh, september uh, first week we were able to see there was a rejection from the candle where the price made a high of 60.1 and also in september uh, end of september we were able to see uh, the price made a high of 62.2 uh, and then uh, actually the price declined so for the past few uh, few weeks the price seems to be a bit of declining so even though the price is declining it's, it's still in an ascending formation and it's still in an ascending trend line so there's not much of a worry there because even the price starts to decline it could, the maximum it could drop is 50 52 because 50 52 is considered as a heavy psychological area and whenever we can see looking at the previous history uh, historical data and the historical uh, candlestick patterns and everything we can clearly see the price when once the, even the price when, when it was trading below the weekly resistance of 5052 uh, we were able to see that price was actually getting rejected over and over again so therefore now that it is trading about the weekly support level we can uh, assume that basically the even the price even uh, if the price declines to 5052 region it could actually make a, a reversal lower reversal from that key area and then uh, it could actually uh, go to the weekly resistance of 6062 so this would be considered as a higher low formation so next key level would be weekly resistance of 6062 so once again we'll be able to expect september uh, end of september uh, we, the week of end of uh, september high which is 62.60 62.2 so that would be first would be the that would be the first initial target of uh, melstaco and then we'll be able to see it moving towards to the weekly resistance 72 so even uh, if we take a look at from the monthly uh, daily chart so daily chart we can clearly see so daily chart is mainly taken to in order to uh, see the reversal patterns and everything so the weekly and monthly mostly are taken uh, to see the accuracy and integrity of the chart, integrity of the uh, uh, stock so we can we basically we can uh, predict the future based on the historical price moments in uh, mostly from the weekly and the monthly chart in from the daily chart we can clearly see the identify certain patterns and reversal patterns so uh, we'll be able to expect some sort of a reversal in the coming weeks if, uh, uh, and the price would actually sustain about about the 50 level and then reach the weekly resistance of 60 62 and breaking above that key level definitely will be able to see the weekly resistance of 70 72 70 is another psychological area uh, once again so uh, uh, as you all can see clearly there was a couple of rejections over the weekly resistance 60 62 even though there was rejections the price is ascending so if you all take a look at uh, from so as I zoom zoom out a bit, if you can look at even the price even before the price was actually declining. So even 2017 to 2020, it was actually the price was declining, declining over and over again. But if you can see, there is a trend for trend change that has happened. So basically, even the price, even though the price was declining from 2018 to 2020, and that from the, from that period of time that I have taken, uh, now start of 2020 uh, start of 2021 we were able to see price inclining so even though yeah the price consolidate or make certain lows the price uh, the stock has potential to go up and uh, break these key levels of weekly resistance 60 62 and further hit to the weekly resistance of 70 72 so initially we'll be able to see price coming to the weekly resistance of 60 62 and then further to the levels of 70 72 so even from the 50 moving average this is a 50 uh, moving average period moving average that i have taken so previously it was trading below the 50 moving average and it was basically declining declining over and over again so now that is trading about the 50 moving average now we can assume that the price actually could make certain highs and break the weekly resistance 60 62 there could be certain higher highs higher lows this is this, this could be this could actually happen in any stock so basically there could be higher high formations higher low whenever the price goes up it should basically make a retracement and make a certain low so therefore we were able to see some sort of higher high higher low formations now that is now the price is since the price is about 50 moving average and also trading about 18 8 18 and 8 moving averages that i have taken uh, we can clearly um, see the price could basically reach the weekly resistance once again 60 62 and break out from that key area uh, especially in a bullish trend like this we'll be able to see the price uh, reaching the weekly resistance 70 72 so there's uh, 
the stock has potential to go from technical wise the stock has potential to reach the level of 70 72 uh yeah since the price since taking uh, taking look at moving averages and uh, also using some of the technical uh, strategies uh, that i have taken so basically here yes, we have ascending uh, formation and also looking at the moving averages we can clearly see the price is trading about those moving averages so basically looking at looking from the technical wise we can uh, the stock has potential to reach uh, 7072 once it breaks the uh, pre once it breaks september uh, last the end of september week high which is 62.2 so definitely um, after reaching that level we'll be able to see the stock moving towards the 7072 key region thank you over to you no Thank you, Harin. So to encompass everything that was said that uh, based off our valuation metrics, which does give us um, a target price of 72.77 rupees, that is via a blend valuation approach, coupled with the fact that we've also done a, tech, a thorough technical analysis on this counter, we do believe that this target price can be achieved, which does mean that in the uh, medium to long run, this stock uh, presents a potential upside of over 26%. Um, and with that, we conclude uh, this presentation. Um, if there are any questions, please do uh, put it in our chat and we can address it uh, uh, as of now. And 